So here's my issue. In the last two weeks, or in the last week, week and a half, I've had two, maybe three people call about the Ferris, wanting to buy the Ferris. The problem is, that mower's in here. See all of this snow? Yeah. The Ferris is in that building right there, that big green building. So the Ferris will go through some of this snow, but some spots are a little too thick. So I have to shovel a path through there and then up here so I could take the walker back there and bring the ferris up here so they have it up front. The problem is, well, I guess I could shovel part of that hill away there, but it's either that or I gotta come up through here with a path and over there to where I can get through easy. The ferris will go through a lot more than the walker will as far as snow, but this ain't gonna be fun. We'll see if these will even start. I may need to go get the jump box. I'm not really sure. The Ferris usually takes a little bit, but it usually starts right up. The Great Dane, on the other hand, that's like a warm weather lover. <laughs> it mows great and works great when I'm doing fall cleanups when it's cold, but the initial start is usually a no-go. Let's see. And that's all she wrote for that. So I guess I'm going to get the jump box and then we'll get them started up and we'll let them warm up while I uh, shovel. Guys, want to see the chickens? You haven't seen them in a while. They're not even in there, actually. Let me fill up the water. Mm -hmm. 
for some of you who don't know, I have this old mower rim here, and I have what's called a heat emitter. Well, I can't lift this at the same time. I have a heat emitter inside here that goes to a plug, and it keeps it nice and warm, but it doesn't melt the bucket, and then they can, it keeps their water thawed out. They can drink through there. And their food comes down this long chute into there. Oh, that chicken up there. What are you doing? Huh? It's chicken water. Shitting all over the place. That's what they're doing. And then that's where I fill it through right up there. But let's close this up. This is their boxes where we get our eggs out of. Flips up. You can see their boxes. I got a red heat lamp in there too. If you can see. Yeah, well you can't see, but there's a you can kind of see a red glow. There's a heat lamp up there for them. And uh they just come out here playing. They come down, their door's over there. I have this cable here, and I unhook it, and it drops their door down on the inside. So they're trapped in there for the night. They got their roosting poles, one there, one over there. This part is not covered. Only this part is, with a metal roof. So this stays semi-dry in there for them, and that's snow. And you can see they're only walking that edge right there, but I just opened it up. They'll go out there. They don't care. They love the snow. They go out there and play in it all the time, but there is this little... That's their little bucket right there. It's the bottom five inches of a... You can leave that closed. It's the bottom five inches of a five-gallon bucket, and we bring all of our scraps. Every time we clean out our fridge, anything. They eat anything, we'll eat. Like we chop it all up, lettuce, meats old spaghetti sauce and stuff left in the fridge that we're throwing out we put it all in there even chicken is uh insane as that sounds chicken from dinner from a couple nights ago we haven't eaten we'll chop it up throw it in there they eat that too every once in a while we'll chop up their eggs and this is a door on this end with two latches we can go in there but um right but we uh we crack up some eggs sometimes and throw them in there because they eat the shells and stuff and it's good protein for them helps them to lay more eggs but that's about it check this out i don't think i ever showed you guys this this is a 1964 springfield 36 i started to restore it years ago did an upgrade in the engine put tri-rib tires on the front ags on the back these things are really really difficult to find but i used to be into restoring old garden tractors a long time ago and uh, I never actually finished it. I don't know why. I don't know if I'm ever gonna either. And then over there, probably can't see it. Let's go show them this one, Bear. Oh yeah. And then this one over here, it is complete. It's just sitting here, but I have all the parts in the garage. This is a 1950 uh, Pennsylvania Copar Panzer T111 with the single wheel in the front. And you'll see if I can show you. See, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but Copar Panzer. I never finished this one. That, for all the years I was restoring garden tractors, that tractor is damn near impossible to find. You can't find them anywhere. And uh, I was going to restore it a long time ago. Don't have the time. I've tried three times in the last two years to give that thing away, and nobody wants it. Um, I never put it online. I'm sure garden tractor clubs everywhere would be dying to have that thing. They'd probably travel 300 miles just to get it. But uh, if any of you guys are interested, send me an email. We might work something out.